Hello beautiful souls, welcome back to another video on Starseed Academy. My name is Jenny and today I have something like really cool and different for you, like a really different kind of video. So I've been um, coming across some really interesting information through doing my readings or in my meditations when I'm channeling and you know asking questions and connecting with the different councils at, at the Galactic Federation of Light. So, but a lot of this actually came through through readings that I'm doing for beautiful clients. And that's the amazing thing about working with you all is that I'm learning along with you. And it's just so interesting how all of these other worlds work. And you know, a lot of the time we think that they're so far off and so different from Earth, yet they have societies and roles and um, interests and hobbies and they have these technology and like medical field like it's really not that different um, and that is amazing to me and so I want to share with you some things that have come across specifically with the Pleiadians and some of the things that they're working on inventing evolving creating because it's so interesting so before we go any further, I'd like to remind you please to click like on this video if you like it and share it if you would like to. But most importantly, please remember to subscribe for new videos every Sunday, Monday, Wednesday. So I'm here three times a week, so please do subscribe and join this community. So let's jump into the video. Now the video is titled Pleiadian Doctors and Scientists. I want to start out with the scientific stuff first because this actually might have affected you in a past life. You might have actually, actually it's very likely that this is something that you've already come across. So your soul might recognize some of this information and we'll see if it rings true for you. So Pleiades is a common stopover before Earth. So that means that souls will choose to incarnate on Pleiades right before they come to Earth. Now, why would they do that? Well, it's actually not so different. I know that we think, like I was saying, that these, these are worlds away and so different, but it's not that different. So if the Pleiadian um, people and society and their planets are existing in the fifth and sixth dimensions, then that's really not that far from Earth where we are in a 3D construct and now evolving the energy within our own physical containers up to fourth and fifth dimensions in the hopes of transforming the entire scenario, right? So here the Pleiades are up in these fifth and sixth dimensions. So a couple of things that could interest you about that. So first of all, when you are talking to, communicating with, channeling, then the further away the dimension or the frequency of that being, the harder it is to clearly hear and pick up the message. But the closer they are, the easier it is. So if you're first starting out with channeling and communicating with guides, like maybe you have a spirit guide that is Pleiadian, that is a great place to start because they are not that far off. And so at the distance of it, is not such a strain. So I hope that makes sense. So the further, like when you get up into the high, high dimensions, like 10, 11, 12, even higher, that can be, those beings can be a little bit more difficult to hear or work with when you're first starting out and getting used to communicating with spirit, channeling, sending, you know, communication through like all of these different dimensions. So for the Pleiades, it's a little bit closer to home. So a little bit easier to hear, probably come through a little bit louder and more clearly. This is essentially the same reason why we would choose to have a stopover on Pleiades before coming here. Because most of us, if you're an awakened starseed soul, if you're a light worker, you know, all working on your mission, already in your spiritual awakening, you can guarantee that you are very comfortable in the higher realms. Right. So you likely have had most of your lifetimes and most of your time spent in these higher realms. So for you to come down to Earth would be a huge shock to the system. And so to kind of downgrade yourself going down into Earth 
having a lifetime a little lower, a little lower, preparing yourself, right? But most of us, myself included, have had a Pleiadian lifetime before this earth lifetime that you're in right now, directly before. So that is why so many of us resonate with Pleiadian starseed origins. But it's just one of the many starseed origins that you've had because it's one of the many past lives that you've had. So you're gonna resonate with definitely more than one, okay? But Pleiades, right before Earth to prepare you. Now along those lines, they actually have programs in place that they use to help souls prepare for Earth. So there's an entire like enormous department of these scientists and researchers working on helping souls prepare for Earth. So how do they do that? Well, they have a training simulation set up to prepare souls for the third dimension, for that lower, denser frequency. So they are able to replicate on a small scale the frequencies and the energetic environment of the third dimension. So they're doing this in a contained small space and then having the souls that are incarnated on Pleiades, so Pleiadians that are set to go to Earth next, go into these training simulations and work with that energy. It would be very, very helpful to a soul to know what to expect. So to step into a third dimensional frequency, right? Now you know Deep within, if that information stays in your soul, you know what it's gonna feel like. You know what to expect, and you could even recognize that frequency when you come to Earth as, okay, I've done this before. Deep, deep within your subconscious and in your soul's past lives, right? And that's why it's important to do it right before Earth as well. Souls can experience this frequency interaction and practice holding their higher vibration while submerged in a third dimensional energy. How amazing is that program? So we have, when, when you always see people talking about or like read quotes about how we trained for this, we're here, we literally trained for this, like on a very literal scale, like this is very real, this program. So it's so interesting to come across in a reading someone whose past life was them in this training program getting ready for Earth or as one of the trainers, like someone actually working on the scientific side, on the research side, in the medical side to measure how this affects a soul, how this frequency, how 3D and 5D or 6D are interacting and how you can help someone prepare to continue to hold their higher frequency while completely submerged in this third dimension. So there are souls here on earth now that have had both sides of the spectrum working towards helping others do that and also being like the experiment or the research patient in that program. So super amazing program, really high level training beyond like what we have on earth for an understanding of creating like an environment at a specific frequency that someone then can work with and, you know, practice within. Or maybe they do have something like that on Earth. Who knows? There are so many like secret programs going on. There's no way you could know them all. And they could very well have this technology. However, on Pleiades, they're using it for, for good. Like they're using it for the ascension program of humanity, that whole process and the training and the preparation for it. So I just think that's amazing. And then the next thing that I want to talk about, so other than the science aspect, Pleiades is also very well known for their healing pods. So they're known throughout many dimensions and people come from all over to experience these healing pods. So the Pleiadian society has really progressed in their technology, in their medical field, and they put those two things together, the technology of healing 
and they're using it to help beings across the universe. So these are very well known healing pods. It looks like a large white bed that you lay down in and it's quite large so that it can fit many different kinds of beings. Um, and I've seen like that it's not just the Pleiadians that get to enjoy this healing um, and use these healing pods, but they actually are allowing like anybody basically who's in need, like, you know, to come either to their planet and use it, um, or they actually now have these healing pods also on ships. So the reason that they would have them on ships is that there are still a lot of missions in the universe um, that are, you know, going into places of unrest. So for instance, the Orion constellation still has a lot going on. There is still lots of density there, a ton of polarity. So that's like when there are sides battling against one another. I've seen them you know, have avian, like blue avian beings using these healing pots. There are a lot of different kinds of avian beings, not just blue avians, which to me kind of look like blue jays, but you know, obviously like an advanced version of that. So they take the most advanced human construct that they have or DNA, and then they choose like um, avian bird of their choosing, and then also choose like the most advanced features and probably personal things that they would like as well. And then they put that together. So it's not just blue avians. I've seen owl beings. I've seen sparrow beings. Like, I don't think you could limit it. There are beings in this universe, like if you can think of it, it's there. Like anything that's that could possibly exist does exist. Our universe is so expansive and continues to expand. And there are new species coming to life every day, right? So in particular, I've seen a lot of like avian beings in the Orion constellation. So looking like either blue jays, eagles, um, owls, sparrows, other different kinds of birds, different colors of birds and all of that. And they are, you know, working with the Galactic Federation and the, um, you know, councils of light to bring peace and balance to Orion still. Like this has been going on so long, but there are beings of, you know, in Orion, there are these very different kinds of beings, just like we're seeing on earth right now. We have all of these different beings that are more interested in service to self. And then we have these beings interested in service to others. And there naturally is gonna be a clash with that especially when one is pushing to take over territory or um, take over, you know, a society, again, very similar to Earth, right? When you see people creating wars over land, over people, over groups of people, whatever. So that's still going on in Orion. If you have an Orion connection, um, you'll know if because it'll be like one of your past lives that have come up or sometimes you just know. Um, for me personally, I know that I have an Orion connection because I have had a past life come through. I have guides that are from Orion. So if you have a guide, this is something that not a lot of people realize. If you have a guide who is say Syrian, then that means like almost 100% certainty that you have had a lifetime on Sirius. If you've had a guide that is an Orion being, then you can pretty much guarantee that you've had at least one lifetime there as well. Because these beautiful guides are connected to us through these experiences, through these lifetimes. So they're generally like a family member or friend from that lifetime or a mentor of some sort. So I have my brother, Othala, from the Orion constellation. We were blue avians at, in that life. And he is now a guide for me after having like a reconciliation and doing a lot of healing on our relationship. Um, because I don't know if you've seen my video, my life on Orion, there was a lot that happened. So there was some healing needed there, but now I feel really close with him. And so you're gonna know if you have an Orion lifetime in your past, because you're going to um, feel the energy there still. So this conflict, all of these different wars 
um, in Orion history and currently going on are going to like be like a heavy spot in your heart. And there's going to be things about Earth that like eerily remind you of those lifetimes on Orion. And you're going to feel almost like deja vu with a lot of the stuff happening on Earth for sure. And then also an easier way is just that like my eye always finds the Orion constellation in the sky. Always. And I look at it and I feel like this sense of belonging. I feel a sense of longing also like missing my home in that. Um, and I and I hope to go back there one day, right? So a piece of my heart will always belong to Orion. That's for sure. Where was I? We kind of went off topic there. Yes, so okay, so there are not just Pleiadians that are able to use these pods, but these avian beings I've specifically seen, but really any being that could fit into it could use it, right? You know, maybe not something like enormous that wouldn't fit, but then they wouldn't be able to fit on the ship anyway. So yeah, there are these healing pods out on these ships helping anyone in need that's going through all of these different things in the Orion constellation. And then back at home on Pleiades, they have them as well for the people returning home or for people specifically traveling there to receive healing. And the healing is not just physical, it is like a full and complete healing. So it brings you back to your original state. And that technology, I mean, I would have no idea what that is, but I see it being like all about frequency, light, energy, in these pods, um, reading you and then restoring you. And you don't need to be a doctor to use the pod and to help others. They actually train Pleiadian healers. And there are a lot of these healers out on ships that man that whole section of the ship. Like they work in the healing section, the healing department of that giant ship, and they heal i mean that's their job they're healers right so it's so beautiful and like the pleiadian society the pleiadian beings are so well known in the universe for being these kinds of charitable benevolent generous beings leading the way in a lot of different ways leading the way with their hearts their technology and you know really um fulfilling that mission that we all feel dearly within our own hearts of helping others and bringing balance back to the places in the universe where it's overrun by one or the other side and just bringing it back to balance because balance is peace. You need the light, you need the shadow, but you need balance because when one is trying to overtake the other and it can go both ways, it's not always the shadow trying to take over. There were times in our history, like Atlantis and also in ancient Egypt, where light workers went too far. And how can that be? You know, how can you go too far with the light? Well, I can give you an example um, from one of my own past lives that I know of. And um, this would be like high priestesses in Egypt working to um, take shadow beings and put them into the light without their consent. And that's not okay. Everybody has free will. You can't force something to go somewhere that it doesn't want to go. So when I'm, another example, when I'm doing a clearing on a home of energy, of like spirit, ghosts, whatever you want to call it, I never force them to go into the light, ever. I give them an option. They can't stay here, like if the house, the homeowner is wanting them to leave, then the homeowner has that right to claim their space. But they can't tell that being where to go. They can say, okay, I always provide the higher option first. Like here is Archangel Michael. He can take you over, cross you over into the light. And of course that is the best option in my mind anyway, because their friends and family are waiting for them. And once they cross over, that lifetime can finally end that loop that they've been stuck in because it's always based around some kind of like tragedy or trauma. It's not pleasant. I've never met a happy ghost ever. They're always sad or upset or something. So it ends that turmoil and then they cross over and then they're the pure soul again and they have all their memories restored and they're with their loved ones and they get the healing that they need. 
And then they can choose, you know, they're back in their power again. They can choose what they want. Um, okay, I want to do another lifetime, whatever it is, but they're not stuck in this invisible existence, which is so frustrating and disheartening and they're lost in it, right? So I have so, so much compassion for the fourth dimensional spirits and ghosts that are so confused and lost and trapped. So I love, love to send them and cross them over into the light and give them that option. However, I have had beings choose not to take that option. They, they do have to leave the space. Like I said, once somebody claims their space, they own that home, they have every right to do that. That's why you don't ever need to be afraid because you have so much more um, power and say than you realize. Um, but then I can just like shoo them out. Like, okay, well, crack a window. If you don't wanna go with this beautiful angel here, that's fine, but out you go and then we seal it up, right? And then they're on their own. And that makes me really sad. But again, that's free will. So there are times in history, such as ancient Egypt and Atlantis, where they took it too far and they forced the light down people's throats um, or forced them back cro to cross over, took them out of the existence that they were choosing. And there you go, like throw them across, right? And so that is something that someone really powerful or with like the knowledge or technology can do take someone's free will like that. Um, but it's a, completely against the universal laws of free will. And so that karma comes back. So the person doing that in another lifetime then faces that karma. And they have to make amends. That's what karma is all about. You make amends through balance. So guess what? That means you're on the other side of it next time, right? So you really want to be careful with, you know, being respectful of all energy because when it comes to your next lifetime that's kind of the the treatment that you're going to experience so anyway back to the pleiadians um i just really trust them i really see all the different sides of what they're working on and i'm really happy that they are involved here on earth either through us you know being Pleiadians and then coming through as a human or through all of the different councils. There are so many councils that are Pleiadian based in the Galactic Federation of Light. So many different ones like the Count Pleiadian Council of Light, Pleiadian Council for Humanity. Like I, I literally don't even know there are so, so many. And what you connect with and channel is what's resonant to your energy. So what matches your energy. So if you hear of someone channeling a different council than you, there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean that that's different information than what you're getting. It's just from a different aspect or department. If you thought of the Galactic Federation of Light, like a huge, um, it's a huge, huge headquarters, first of all, it's a giant ship and all of these councils underneath that one umbrella of GFL. And then they all work together, but they all also have like their own departments for lack of a better term. So yes, the, the Pleiadians are like these altruistic, humanitarian type spirits and so beautiful and so high vibrational. And I'm so glad that they're like right, right up, just up that one or two dimensions from us so close to home. And doesn't that make you wonder Here's a little thought to chew on. So what does that mean humans will be capable of in the future? Because like I said, the Pleiadians are not so far from us, right? Or is it possible that that is us in the future? Because as you know, time is an illusion. There is really no past lives. It's all happening at one time. This might be going too far now. We're like all over the place with this video, but that's something that you can look up if you're interested in that. That is something that I have a really hard time wrapping my mind around, that everything is happening at the same time. So it's alternate lives, not past or future. It's alternate, alternate timelines, alternate lives, all happening at once for you, the soul. How is that possible? I don't know, but I know that it's true. I know that time is an illusion. And when we are outside of this 
construct of the third dimension and outside of the capabilities or limitations of the human brain, it all becomes very clear. Like when you're astral traveling, it's so clear, isn't it? You just think of something and you're there. You think of someone and you're with them. Like it's instant, instant. So it's something that we know and we do understand, but it's just hard to comprehend back in the human. So who knows? Time is an illusion. Time is a tricky little thing. And anything is possible. 100%. One eternal percent. Like it's, I guarantee you, anything that you can think of that's possible is probably happening. There are so many timelines. It's overwhelming. You could never understand it all. And there's a timeline for every single outcome. Good, bad, neutral, however you want to judge it in our perspective. Um, there's a timeline for everything. So in one timeline, we are the Pleiadians. Humanity becomes that in the future. So who knows? Anyway, so I want to ask any of you out there that have experiences with Pleiadians to chime in, please. So whether you have a past life as a Pleiadian, a guide, or whether you like to channel, communicate with them, visit them astrally, whatever it is, does this resonate for you? Have you seen any of this as well? So the training simulation to prepare souls for 3D or these healing pods or anything like that, please share your information below. We all have a piece of the puzzle. We all have our own little bits of information that we come across. And as we put together, we get that bigger picture. And we're all learning together. I'm learning right alongside you and learning so much through doing readings. It's been such an expansive place of my life and really like personally helped me in my own growth and like knowledge. And then also obviously helping the soul that's getting the reading to understand their history and their past and everything that they're made of. That's so important. It really helps you to know yourself. And when you read these past life experiences, it sparks something awake inside of you. It does. Like when I had my Orion past life come through, as painful as that was, it woke up a whole part of me, like a whole part of my heart and soul. And then I felt more like myself. Does that make sense? Like more whole, more complete. So I just think it's all so fascinating and I can't wait to see what you think as well. So please comment below. And then I'll also just let you know that I'm going to leave my link in the in the description part below so that you can find me if you'd like. Just click on that. It opens up and shows you all of the different social sites where you can find me. But also you can click and go through to sign up to be a client. So I do offer these past life readings or spirit guide readings or the all in one reading, which is like everything in one. You get three past lives, three um, messages from different spirit guides so three different guides plus you get to ask any three questions you want and i ask your team and then channel the answer so it's really like huge it's a huge reading and it's really fulfilling as well fulfilling for me too on my end getting to do it so it's very very detailed you can check out my testimonials um, or maybe if somebody's had a reading, they can leave a comment below and let you know just how detailed it is. Like, it's like reliving that entire life, your name, what you looked like, what you're wearing, who's around, what you're doing, like, it's insane. So um, I'm just really grateful to be able to do this work and uh, use my gifts to help people, to help them awaken and remember who they are and how powerful they are. There's nothing better than that. So thank you so much for joining me today. I know I bounced around a lot in this video, but this information is just so interesting to me and that it leads me in all these different offshoots of information that I have that I can connect together. So I'm going to leave it there for today and I thank you and I ask you to please remember to click like and then subscribe so that you can check out all of the new videos coming up. And before we go today, as always, I'm going to leave you with a reminder of oneness and discernment, and it goes like this. <sighs> Listen to your heart and the quiet voice within, because you 
are so much more than the body you are in. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.